Hey everyone, this is Chappie over here at Intense, and for today's video, we're going to be unboxing and assembling an Intense Taser MX. Let's get started. All right, so with the box open, we're gonna grab our included Intense toolbox. We're gonna to set that aside, as well as our accessory box. This will include your pedals, as well as some of the needed components that we'll, we will utilize during assembly. Now I can pull the wheels out. Set these aside. All right, so with the wheels out, we're gonna grab our handlebars. And what we're gonna do now is raise our seat post so that we can get it into the stand. So we're gonna come over to the left-hand side of the handlebar. Undo the packaging. We're gonna depress this lever here with our thumb, which is gonna bring up our seat. Now we can go ahead and put the bike in the stand. All right, so now that we have the Taser MX in the stand, let's talk a little bit how to charge your battery. So the Taser MX alloy has a Shimano N2 battery and the charge port is located on top of the motor here. It's important that we go ahead and get the battery on the charger in order to wake it up from sleep mode. And that way we can start riding once everything's charged up. All right, so coming over to the back of the bike, we're gonna get started by installing our rear derailleur. So this is gonna utilize a five millimeter Allen that can be found on your included three-way. We're gonna line our Allen up with our main pivot bolt of our rear derailleur. Take our five millimeter Allen, insert it into the main pivot bolt of the rear derailleur. We're gonna line up the main pivot bolt with our derailleur hanger. And we're just gonna gently, taking care not to cross thread our derailleur hanger or bolt, we're gonna go ahead and get one to two threads started here. Then we're gonna come over to the back side of the derailleur and take a look at what we call the B plate. All right, so coming to the back of the derailleur, what we wanna take a look at is our B plate, which you can see moving here. We wanna make sure the tab of our B plate is contacting the flat surface or derailleur hanger, like you see here. Once we see this contact and everything's nice and square, we know our rear derailleur is positioned properly. We'll go ahead and just snug this up. All right, now coming to the front of the bike, we're going to get our stem assembly position. That way we can get our handlebars installed. So we're gonna start this by loosening the two pinch bolts. Our stem, and then that'll allow us to rotate the stem into the forward direction. So you'll notice that the stem is facing the same direction that the arch of the fork is located. Now, once we have the stem roughly into position, we're just gonna snug one bolt down just to kind of hold it in place. Um, and once we get the bike on the ground, from that point, we will align the front end and torque those bolts. Now we're just going to remove the stem faceplate. And you'll notice as we're pulling this off, we'll take the opportunity to look. There's two small arrows here. On reassembly, we're gonna make sure that those two arrows are, at, are pointing to each other and also that there is zero gap up there and we'll demonstrate that here in a moment. All right, with the faceplate off, we can now take our handlebars and gently roll them up into position. We wanna take care to make sure we're not pinching any of our display or mode selector wires, as well as our derailleur cables or brake lines. And then we're gonna take our faceplate, reinstall, taking extra care here to make sure we do not cross thread any of the bolts or threads here. Let's get that snug back off half turn and we can proceed to install the last three bolts. All right, so during assembly of the faceplate, you notice that I did the top two bolts first. And the reason for this is we wanna maintain a zero gap up here where those two arrows are that we talked about earlier. So we're gonna go ahead and get that, those snugged into position we want to double check our alignment of our handlebar, both left and right, as well as our roll. Once we're happy with our orientation there, we can go ahead and snug the bottom two bolts as well. All right, with our rear derailleur snugged into position, we're now going to come back with our torque wrench sent to 10 to 12 newton meters, and we're going to torque our rear derailleur. And now coming back with our torque wrench, we're gonna start on rider's left top. And the torque wrench is gonna be set to five Newton meters. Rider's right top. And we're gonna come down to rider's left bottom.
and then writer's right bottom. Again, we want to ensure that there's zero gap on top and we maintain a small gap at the bottom. All right, so in our accessory box, we're gonna be locating our display mount. So this mount is gonna clip onto our handlebar over top of the stem, and then we will plug our wires in and slide our display on. Take these two small Phillips head screws out. And we're gonna take these straps here they can pull out. Just be careful not to pull them too far. They may snap. Just slip them over the bar like so. I'll split the stem. Just to make this part of the process a little simpler, we can flip this back. Get those threads started here. We don't wanna go tight quite yet because we're gonna roll this up and into position over the stem. And then we can come back to those same Phillips heads and just snug them about one to two Newton meters. So now with our display bracket mounted, we're going to hook up our cables. So we're gonna take our TL EW300 tool that's included with your bike inside your accessory box. We're gonna use this. We're gonna take our mode selector coming from rider's left-hand side of the bar. We're gonna slide our cable into position into the tool. It's gonna to look like this. So we're gonna take our mode selector and plug it into rider's left-hand port over here. As a note, they can go on either side, but for organizational purposes, it's always best to stay on the same side over here. And then what we're gonna do is firmly press and listen for an audible click. Once you hear that click, we know the cable's been installed properly. We're gonna follow suit now with our display wire that's going to be coming from the down tube of your bike. So we wanna make sure it goes underneath the cables here, pull it up to where we can get a good sight of it. We're gonna line our tool back up just like the mode selector, that cable in there, make sure it's located. We're gonna roll that up and install it into the last remaining opening port. Again, listening for the audible click. Once that's clicked, we know it's been successfully installed. Now the last step is we're gonna install our display. So this simply just slides into position and then just snaps into, into place. All right, so now moving back to the rear of the bike, we're going to install the rear wheel. So we're gonna start this by pulling our rear pad spacer out and then removing our rear axle. We'll remove our rear axle by using a five millimeter Allen on the non-drive side. All right, so next we're gonna prep the rear derailleur. So this particular model, the pro model of the Taser Alloy is going to have TRP's all new Evo 12 speed drivetrain. This has a neat little feature that allows us to unlock the lower cage. So we're gonna do this by pulling this tab out. And then that will release and we can just push this forward. All right, with the frame prepped, let's take a look at the wheel. So now that we have the packaging off, we're now gonna remove our rotor guard here. Slide this off and we wanna take a close look at the guard itself. This guard will probably have a hub end cap or spacer on here. So we're gonna make sure that comes off of the protection and then slides back on to the wheel. All right, now we're going to finally install the rear wheel. So now we can pull our rear derailleur towards the rear of the bike, slide our wheel up into the frame, lining up our chain on the smallest gear of the cassette, and then following that up with lining our rotor up with our caliper. Then once that's aligned, we can just simply put some upward pressure and get the wheel into the frame. Once that's done, we're gonna take our rear axle from the non-drive side, slide it through until it contacts the threads. We're gonna apply some inward pressure while turning the axle tight. At this point, we'll snug that axle into position and then follow up with a torque wrench. So now with our rear axle snugged into position, let's go ahead and reset our rear derailleur. So we're gonna do this by rolling the lower cage rearward and then finally pulling on this lever downward and that will allow the detent to lock. 
Once you hear that click, it is locked into position and ready to ride. Now lastly, following up the rear axle with a torque wrench set to 11 newton meters, we'll get this torqued into position. Now with everything torqued into position, the last step here is we're going to lock our hall lock on our TRP rear derailleur. So this lever is just gonna simply press up until it locks into position and that prevents any unwanted movement of the rear derailleur. All right, so what we're working on here is our pro model. If you have an expert model, this is actually gonna come equipped with a Shimano drivetrain and it will be a very similar process. However, it has a few less features like the lower cage lock and the hull lock itself, but process will remain generally the same. All right, so now moving on to the front of the bike, we're gonna get our fork prepped. That way we can move to install our front wheel. So we're gonna pull our rotor spacer pad spacer there, and then we're gonna remove our front axle. All right, so now we're gonna prep our front wheel. So with the packaging removed, we're gonna now remove our rotor guard. One thing we wanna take note of here is to make sure that our hub end caps are on the wheel. So as you can see here, it's still stuck to our rotor guard. So we're gonna make sure we pull this off and we'll reinstall it into the hub. So now we can move to install the front wheel. So we'll line up our tire in between the fork legs, line up our rotor in the brake pads, and then finally line up the wheel into the fork dropouts. Once that's positioned, apply some upward pressure. We're gonna take our front axle, slide that through, make sure everything's lined up. Now with our front axle snugged into position, we're gonna follow up with our torque wrench with a five millimeter Allen set to six Newton meters. We'll get the axle torqued. And then come back to the pinch bolt on the front of the fork here. And we're also going to torque this pinch bolt to six Newton meters. Now again, what we're working on here is the Taser MX Pro with the Olin's fork. Um, there is also the Taser MX Expert that utilizes a DVO fork. The process is generally the same. However, the axle will utilize a six millimeter Allen torque to seven Newton meters. Um, and it does not utilize a pinch bolt on the DVO. These, these details are laid out in the uh, printed owner's manual and that can also be found online. All right, so next step here is we're gonna install our pedals. So let's take a look at a couple details here that we need to be familiar with. So a couple details we need to be familiar with when we go to install our pedals is CRL and CRR. CRL is gonna be our non-drive side or rider's left-hand side. CRR is gonna be our drive side or rider's right-hand side. So we're gonna take our CRR and install this onto the drive side crank arm. It's always good to get those threads started by hand. Then we can follow up with a six millimeter Allen from the back side of the pedal spindle and tighten and torque to 47 to 54 Newton meters. You'll also notice that there is flats on the spindle as well. This will utilize a 15 millimeter box wrench or plate wrench if you do not have an Allen, but the Allen's recommended as it is included as well. So next we're gonna install our CRL onto the rider's left-hand side. We're gonna get those threads started by hand. Take our six millimeter Allen from the back side of the spindle and thread it into position. And then, then again, tighten and torque to 50, 47 to 54 Newton meters. All right, so if you notice any issues with your shifting or tuning, we do have technical videos that guide you step-by-step through the process on how to get this set up properly. All right, so now that we have the bike on the ground, we're going to finalize our headset preload and tighten our pinch bolts on our stem. So what I'll do here for the pro model here is we're gonna roll our display up and out of the way and gently roll this forward and this will expose our headset cap here. So with this, we're gonna loosen our two pinch bolts back here and then we're gonna torque our headset cap to two to four Newton meters. We're gonna loosen the two pinch bolts on the back of the stem. Once the stem is free from the steer tube, we're gonna take our four millimeter Allen and tighten to two to four Newton meters. 
Now during this process, it's important to make sure that the headset is loose enough that it rotates freely, but also tight enough that you don't have any movement or knock in the headset. So once we're happy with our headset preload and our front wheel alignment, we can move to tighten and torque our pinch bolts into position. Just bring both of these up to just a light snug. Then we're gonna follow up with our torque wrench set to five Newton meters with our four millimeter Allen. Hands up. Move to our lower. Once that's tightened and torqued, we can roll our display down, gently position it into our desired location, and then we'll snug our Phillips head screws up to one to two Newton meters. All right, so with our stem torqued and positioned properly, let's take a look at our saddle height. So first step here is we wanna make sure our dropper post is in the highest position possible. We'll just do that by simply depressing our dropper lever there. From that point, we're gonna see where we're at. So a real quick gauge to get your ideal um, ballpark here is put your hand on top of your hip bone and then slide your hand over the top of the seat. Now for me, this saddle height's pretty good and this is a great place to start. If you are too low or too high, we can make adjustments to accommodate. So we'll do that by taking a four millimeter Allen on the seat post clamp here. We'll go about half to three quarters of a turn. We'll loosen our seat post. We can slide up or slide down. Make sure our alignment's good and then we'll re-tighten and torque our seat post clamp. Seat post clamp will be torqued to six to eight Newton meters. All right, so as we finalize the last personal setup features on the bike, we're gonna take a look at our tire pressure. So. Tire pressure is very important and it's something you should check before every ride. For the front, we recommend 24 PSI plus or minus five, um, depending on terrain rider weight. For the rear, we recommend 26 PSI plus or minus five, depending on conditions and rider weight. All right, so before we drop the bike on the ground and set up sag, we're gonna install our water bottle cage. So we're gonna do this by taking a three millimeter Allen. We're gonna loosen the two three millimeter bolts on the down tube of our Taser MX alloy. Okay. Cage bolts removed. We're gonna slide our water bottle cage into position, lined up over the holes. It's important to take care here as well to make sure we do not cross thread the bolts. So we'll get both of those snugged into position and then come back and torque to three Newton meters. All right, just so we're familiar with the process on how to remove the battery, let's take a look. All right, so we're gonna take our key that will be located in our accessory box and we're gonna insert the key into the hole here. And we're gonna do a quarter turn and you'll see that it releases the battery like so. So once the battery has been released from the lock, there is a stainless button that we're gonna depress at the nose of the battery and this will release the battery and allow us to remove it from the down tube. So this is our stainless button here. So to install our battery, we're gonna use this keyway here and take a look at our plug. We're gonna align into the down tube onto the bottom connection point. We're gonna apply some downward pressure and then roll the battery up into position. And then we're gonna firmly press into the down tube. Once you hear that click, it's an installed and will go nowhere. All right, so now that we're almost ready to hit the trails, the last step in this process for building your bike and getting it personalized to you is to set up your suspension sag. Now we do have detailed videos that walk you through that process for both the pro model and the expert model. So there you have it. We have successfully completed the Intense Taser MX Alloy unboxing and build. If you have any questions in the process or need any assistance along the way, don't hesitate to reach out to our customer service team. They'll be more than happy to help. Thanks for choosing Intense.